My next guest, cannot wait to meet him, Shrine Bowl standout. Of course, I've watched him, five-year letterman at the University of Michigan, Michigan man, four-time academic Big Ten honoree. Hey-o, 2023, all Big Ten honorable mention. Let's not forget, this is a national championship. No big deal, Cornelius Johnson. How are you? Good. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you really for being here. For I had Blake Corum on yesterday. You've got big shoes to fill. Mm. Yeah, Blake, he told me he was on the show. He had a lot of fun here, too. Yeah. I'm going to ask you tough, tough questions, Cornelius. No, I'm kidding. Damn. <laughs> I'm okay. totally kidding. Uh, listen, we know Michigan went 15-0 and in route to that natty. Uh, little Birdie, your dad, Claude, told me that you've been a winner all along, undefeated and unscored on. Let's shout out those wow. Riverside Gators, baby! Wow. Wow, you took out the old school photos. I yeah, did. that was a crazy time back back in the day. That's me playing running back right there. What can you tell me? These photos on your Instagram are absolutely incredible. Were you were you five years old when you started your Instagram? <laughs> yeah, I kept a lot of people. I guess delete their old photos or archive them. I don't know. I kind of just keep my keep my photos from way back then, from 2012, 2011, 2010, just to like show us. I mean, it's still me, it's still the same person. Show me that little running back again, control room. That, what would you tell? What would you tell this little guy, this little gator, this little Riverside gator about what he's going through I right mean, now and all the success he's had? I remember I switched to switched over from running back to receiver, probably coming into high school, mm -hmm. you know, middle school, high school time period. I mean, at that age, not not, not a lot of the quarterbacks could really throw those route route trees like that. You know, they couldn't throw the routes, so I was just trying to figure out a way to get myself the ball. And uh, running back worked out perfect for me. And then eventually I switched to receiver. Uh, just gaining different knowledge and still the same, still the same skill set. But I would just tell myself, keep going, and like you know, it's all gonna work out eventually. And it did. And then you make, you know, you have to make decisions along the way. And you did that, right? January 2023, you said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to Michigan for a fifth year. You, of course, win a national championship. I'm sure you don't regret any of these decisions. But I'm curious, did the thought ever cross your mind to maybe, like, flirt with going to a school that throws the ball a little more? Mm. That's a good point. I mean, I remember we all came back 2023. A lot of my teammates, you know, we decided let's let's run it back one more year. We we're so close. And we all made that effort to, you know, have that goal to win the national championship, win the whole thing, be legends forever in doing that. We were able to accomplish that. So like, that was super exciting. And then, you know, like your point, you can always leave and, you know, try and figure out what, what there is on the other side. But the way we did it here was was a style that could translate well to the pros. So I just want mm. to stay the course and stick with it and uh, keep my head down and keep working, get that goal. And, of course, big play experience helps you. A former NFL coach obviously helps you. You played in three Big Ten championships, three college football playoff semis, the, a national championship. Plus, you always, you always showed out in these rivalry games. We were talking about it, our yeah. big group meeting yesterday when you were coming on. Those two touchdowns against Ohio State in 2022. How does that big game experience <laughs> get you ready for this next level? Yeah, that's funny. I mean, <laughs> they just call me, like, uh, big game CJ. Yeah. You know, certain games, you got to show up more than others. Certain days, uh, you know, you got to – dig a little deeper for those big matchups. Uh, and that definitely, place like here, does prepare you for that. You know, playing on the biggest stage in front of, you know, millions, um, it gets you ready for that NFL competition and those big games. You know, you're not just playing against lower conferences. You know, the Big Tens, mm -hmm. all, all NFL styles, all NFL defenses. So that's another thing that translates. Also playing with Coach Harbaugh, like you said, you know, he's got the NFL mindset, and that's going to help too. He's a little wild, though. <laughs> I'm excited yeah, he's, he's back crazy. in the NFL. He's nutty, right? Yeah, he's crazy. Yeah. He, we had Taylor <laughs> Lewan was on Monday, and he told us that when he came in the locker room, he said, we're going to mow the lawn and um, get the, we're going to cut the grass and find the snakes. Like, what are you, I don't even know what that means. You were with him for five years. What is your Harbaugh-ism, like the favorite thing he said that sticks out to you? I mean, I guess that makes sense. Like, <laughs> mow the lawn, cut the grass, like, you're just trying to mow the lawn, shut like shut it down, and like try and figure out who's who. You know, figure out if there's any snakes in the building uh -huh. or any like mosquitoes in there. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, there's some other things like I heard recently he had like a yard sale or like a garage sale or something in his house at Michigan because I guess he might be moving out west to California. Mm -hmm. And like that was just funny to me. Like 
that's you've seen like Toy Story or something. Like, who has yard sales anymore? <laughs> like, I didn't even know that was a thing. You didn't know that was a thing. Oh my gosh, you're so young. It's amazing. Yeah. People, yeah, old people have yard sales, Cornelius. This man had a yard sale. Like, that's hilarious. He uh, had a yard sale. People just came by probably and just took stuff. That's funny. Do you think he would be somebody who would like argue about price? Like, if somebody's like, I'll give you $5, he's like, no, $10. Would he argue? Yeah, I feel like he would. He put up a fight for it because, I mean, it's not really about the money at that point. It's about, like, what he finds worth it. You know, obviously, you know, $5 is $5. You're not going to do nothing with $5. But, yeah. like, it's if he's saying it's not worth $5, then, like, you're going you're gonna to argue for something lower. It's just a concept. It's all conceptual. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing over there with this yard sale that he just had shipping Keenan Allen out of town, saying uh, yeah. bye to Mike Williams. Like, listen, there's a little uh, there's a little space out there out west in that receiver room. Would you enjoy a reunion with him? That would be crazy. I wouldn't mind that at all. I mean, I remember the San Diego Chargers were one of my favorite teams growing up with LaDainian. Oh, yeah. Vincent Jackson, uh, Legadu Nane. Uh, who else they had? Uh, Darren Sproles, like all those guys. Yeah, little number 43 <laughs> running back there. That was yeah, the best. Yeah, like that was my squad. And then they moved to San Diego. I mean, moved out of San Diego. It wasn't the same necessarily. But I still follow them, like their colors and everything. So it's funny how he moved from the Michigan Maze and Blue to another another type of Maze and Blue, sort of. Yeah, Justin Herbert throwing to you wouldn't be that bad either. Just exactly. Yeah, one of the greats. Just saying. Um, I was thinking, there's a wide receiver quarterback duo that went from winning a natty to playing in the Super Bowl. I don't know if you've ever heard of Joe Burrow or Jamar Chase, but that connection seems to be working in Cincinnati. How would you mm. feel about getting drafted as, uh, on the same team as your quarterback, J.J. McCarthy? Mm. A, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of excitement would go into that because I feel like some of these teams, they ask you, you know, who would you bring from your team? You know, who, would, who else say we draft you? Who else would we pick? Who else would you want to play with? And I definitely would say uh, McCarthy is one of those guys because we have a connection on and off the field. So, like, we know where I'm going to be on the field and I know where that ball is going to be because we don't practice it so much at Schembechler Hall and all throughout wherever we go. So going to play with him at the next level would be definitely something like that. If we can – we can recreate that national championship run at the next level. I'm going to go ahead. I'm kind of good at this. I did pretty well at this. It's free agency. Like I, if that happened, I'd like to see it happen in like Minnesota. I know the quarterback stuff is, mm. you know, like whatever, but you, you and JJ go there. Then you have Justin Jefferson. Okay. That's something I'd like to see. And then you can kick Jalen Johnson's ass twice a year, which would be fine. We just had him Ooh. on the show. We have this going on. <laughs> Listen, I want to pump you up a little bit because I look at PFF, a lot of scouts, the people making decisions use their metrics, right? You led the nation with an 82% contested catch rate. How are you so damn good when you have a defender in your face? I mean, I was surprised by that because I sometimes don't even realize it. You know what I mean? Like you're going through the routes that you've practiced and then, you know, sometimes it's just bang, bang. You know, it could happen in an instant and uh, it, ends, it ends up being a catch. Uh, there's so many examples like that on film. You know, if you pull that up, it just goes into all the all the concentration drills we do in practice and uh, all the extra work we get in with our receivers coach, me, Roman, Colston, AJ, all the other pass catchers and, and even Blake after practice getting on the jugs machine or getting some extra catches in definitely helps with, you know, that contested catch concentration. And it's not just that, right? Let's, 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 let me give you the love here. You came up with some huge blocked punts too. Like you didn't just shine as a receiver. Ooh. Special teams, you don't see a lot of starting yeah. receivers putting in that kind of work. I've heard a lot of guys ask out of playing special teams when they get to your level. Why is it important for you to be out there? We only have 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. Nah, teams, man. Teams is like one of the one of the funnest parts of it. You know, that's like when you go out there with the guys, it's like a ragtag group of guys. You know, one guy could be a could be a linebacker. One guy could be a receiver, a corner. It doesn't matter. You just get those guys and just playing ball. That's the best thing about special teams. It's not really like you got a position. You're just a ball player. And that's like the most fun part to me. Blocking I punts is crazy. I think 32 coaches are like, oh, my God, where can I get him? You can get him in the draft in Detroit in April. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Bye.